Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to EMT Made Easy, where we make learning EMT very easy. Now, I know some of you guys may be thinking, why does John have glasses on? Well, the sun is hitting me like right in the face, and this just happens to be the best place to make this video in my backyard. So that's why I have the glasses on. In case you were wondering, I'm not trying to be cool. It's just for convenience. And even with the glasses on, it still kind of hurts my eyes. So today I'm going to be going over scene safety, which is the first section that is found on your medical assessment sheet and your trauma assessment sheet. Where did I leave my marker at? Oh, it's in my pocket. So first thing, before you even start your assessment, before you even go into your scene safety part of your medical assessment sheet, you want to tell the proctor that you have everything you need for the scene, for your scenario. So you're gonna indicate that or tell the proctor that by saying BSI. BSI stands for Body Substance Isolation. That means that you have on whatever it is that you need for this call right now, um, whether it's gloves, goggles, whatever it is, you have it and you're ready to rock and roll. You have whatever you need. Which BSI means the exact same thing as PPE. PPE stands for uh, Personnel Protective Equipment, which is the equipment you need for protection. And that's what that stands for. So first things first, you walk up, you're about to start your scenario, BSI is my scene set. And now, we're into your scene size up, which is what I'm talking about today. So in your scene size up, in that section of your NREMT psychomotor skill for the medical and trauma uh, sheet, skill sheet, you have these four little categories. Really simple, really easy. First things first, is my scene safe? So when you're asking, is your scene safe, you're asking about any hazards. Hazards, this could be a, a spill, a gas leak, if you smell something weird. Uh, do you see gasoline, any kind of unknown fluid, if it's a car accident, for example, things of that nature. That's what we're talking about here. And you're also asking, is there an aggressor nearby? Is there anybody causing trouble? Is there a man with a gun, a man with a knife? Somebody that may, that may make this situation worse or potentially dangerous. That's what you're asking about. Also, just any possible danger at all. I mean, for example, as far as scene safety, the surroundings, uh, that could also be, I mean, it could, be, could it become a dangerous situation. For example, if the scene is at a bar, is that dangerous? Do you feel endangered? So that's what you're asking about when scene safety. So BSI. First things first, so BSI is my scene safe. You're gonna ask like that. Um, and then most likely they're gonna say, yes it is safe because it's the NREMT and there is never a danger. After that, we're asking what's my MOI and my NOI. For medical, it's always gonna be a NOI, nature of illness. So just like, just like what it sounds like, it's a medical condition. So, nature of illness. For your MOI, it's going to be, that stands for mechanism of injury. If you have an MOI, we're talking more of a trauma situation. So what happened? What do you physically see? So mechanism of injury. Man, it's cold out here. It's getting chapped. It feels weird. So just to kind of clarify on MOI, I'm going to write it down here. Let me see if we can... I got to zone in. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Sorry, like I said, the sun's in my eyes. All right, so MOI. So what really, what is an MOI? A lot of people don't really understand what an MOI is, a mechanism of injury. Let's say you were going up to a car accident, right? So, um... This is right here, it's a light post, right, connected to other light posts, 
and a car was going about 60 miles an hour and hit this light pulse, right? So if you're walking up, and this is your rig is over here, so your ambulance is over here, got your lights on, pretty cool. That's your star right there, awesome stuff, right? And then you're right here, you're walking up to the scene with your little bag. As you approach this car, let's say that you see a shattered, a shattered window shield, right? So it's shattered as you're approaching the front of the car. That right there is an MOI, mechanism of injury. So by me approaching the car and seeing the cracks on the window, that mechanism of injury tells me that there might be a head injury. That's what that tells me, okay? So a MOI is like a hint of what happened before you, before you even see the patient. You kind of have an idea of what's going on uh, before you even get there. That's what an MOI is. It's more of a hint before you even get to the patient as you're approaching the scene. Uh, okay, so we got that out of the way. So BSI is my scene safe. Uh, what's my MOI or NOI? They're going to tell you what happened. After that, number of patients. This matters a lot because if you have one patient, hopefully you guys can divide that. If you have one patient, hey, you might be good to go, right? You can, you can deal with that. Um, you can take care of that. If you have maybe three, two, three, or more patients, now you might want to call for additional resources, right? Now you might want to actually get somebody else to help you out. Let's go ahead and call for additional resources. That's why this matters. Number of patients. So you're going to ask this by saying, is this my only patient? Most likely in your NREMT, it's always going to be one patient. That's why I'm not really going into depth over this because it's always going to be one patient for the most part. And then we're going to call for additional resources. The way I, I would like my students to approach this or anybody that I, that I think uh, has, is going through the through uh, the NREMT psychomotor skills is that you should always call for additional resources. Just say it like this, I'm gonna go ahead and call for additional resources. I can always cancel if I don't need it. In the field, it's a whole different story, but for your NREMT, again, it's about getting those check marks, right? Get your points passed and then move on with your life. As far as additional resources, that could be more rigs, more ambulance for your patients, right? So maybe an ambulance, additional ambulance. How about maybe uh, the utilities, utilities for the lights? Put out the lights. It could be that too. So additional resources doesn't just mean firefighting. It doesn't. It doesn't mean the police men. It doesn't mean other ambulance companies or other ambulance rigs to come and help you out. It could be anybody you need uh, to come and help you out. If there's a dog that's trying to bite you, how about we call? Animal control, there you go, animal control. Um, so it just, whatever you need for the situation, if there is a spill of an unknown, unknown substance, uh, get a hazmat team on you. That might be your additional resource. And then, I forgot to add this one, but it's not least, C-spine. C-spine consideration. Now this, it depends on your instructor and your course. Some courses I know say that you have to put a C spine, you have to put a C collar on them. That's what this means, C spine consideration. But it really depends on your instructor again. All I would say if I was a student, you know, and if my instructor allowed this, was that I would just ask uh, or just kind of state if there's anything that dictates that I should put on a C collar on my patient, I would, I would do so after asking them. So did they fall? Is, is it a trauma situation and do they have neck neck and or back and head pain? If they do, I'd go ahead and have my partner or myself put a C collar on them and then we just move on. Or you can just put a C collar on them and move on. H however your instructor excuse me, wants you to, to uh, say it. So as far as your scene size up, this is it. Not a big deal. So it's like this. PSI is my scene safe. It is awesome. Is it was my MOI or my NOI? Is this my only patient? I'm gonna go ahead and call for additional resources. I can always call if I don't need them. 
and I'm also going to consider C-spine depending on what my patient states and the MOI, if there is an MOI, if it's not a, a medical condition. So that's really the meat and potatoes of this video. I am going to hit up on some things real quick, but just give me a second. I have to erase this stuff. Seen size up. All right. So, as far as MOI scene size up, as you're approaching the car, right, let's let's go with the trauma situation. Let's say that, you know, oh man, this chair's breaking on me. Budget cuts. Let's say that it is a, a trauma situation. So you're doing the primary, the, you're doing your scene size up for a trauma, for your trauma scenario. And as you're approaching the vehicle, the car, you see uh, a shattered window shield that was caused from a just front impact, right? So this happened right here. The car, it was, a, it was a front end collision, hit a light post, and the patient went up. So I'm gonna kinda blow this up. So this, is the front of the car and this is the window sh the, the front window shield and there's cracks if your patient was to crack the window shield most likely i'm gonna have what's called an up and over up and over collision all right so that means your patient went up and over and hit the steering wheel hit the window this you'll see most likely with taller people now, if your patient's shorter, like I am, they're gonna go down and under. And with these people that go down and under when, with the front collision, front end collision, collision, I can't even talk right today. Um, what's gonna happen here, you're gonna have your broken legs, broken feet, broken ankles, stuff like that. So these things to kinda know. If it is a front end collision and, and you don't see a window shield crack, you might have an up, a down and under uh, situation. And I would kind of just kind of, you know, kind of just be worried, not worried, but just keep an eye out and just consider the fact that they might have a broken lower extremity, a foot, an ankle, something of that nature. Let's see what else I got for you guys here. Uh, so if you're a follower, I can talk about that some other time. That's it for today guys, keep it short and simple, honestly, uh, tomorrow I'm going to be making a video on primary assessment, kind of just break everything down, and I've already made a video on the entire medical assessment that kind of complements this, or you can you know, just kind of review this as, as part of that. Alright, so take care guys.